What's up my friends? Welcome to another video. I'm Rob Stewart and I'm here to help you get your skin and your overall health back on track. In today's video, I'm gonna be sharing with you guys my cyclical carb cycling approach with my animal-based diet. So we're gonna start the video off today with why I do cyclical carb cycling with my animal-based diet. Number one, palatability, a little variation, and it makes the animal-based diet and the carnivore diet and the staying clean with it extremely easy. Reason number two, I like to play with my body comp. I like to get a little bit more shredded sometimes. I like to gain a little bit more weight sometimes. Reason number three, I play a lot of sports. I do a lot of outdoor activities and sometimes it's nice to have a little bit more carb intake for me personally. Number four, when I do cyclical carb cycling, overall my digestion and my gut biome health is on point. Some of you might be asking, what is cyclical carb cycling? It simply means undulating or varying on purpose the grams of carbs that you bring into your diet for a chosen block of time. So with it, you can vary between keto phases, high fat, fat adapted phases, and more of a metabolically flexible phase. They all interchange and can actually make the other phases improve. So how many grams per day is gonna be based on which phase of the cyclical carb cycling you are in? When you are in the keto phase, which is the highest fat and the lowest carb, I typically go from about zero carbs, overt carbs, so basically no fruit, no carb intake at all, up to 20, 25 grams of total carbs per day, and that's for the keto phase. For the low carb, high fat, fat adapted phases, I go from about 25 grams of carbs all the way up to about 90 carbs. So for my moderate phases or my higher carb phases, which is still pretty darn low carb compared to other diets, I go from the 90 range all the way up to the 150 gram range. Now, if you're a different size than me, these exact grams might not be perfect for you. I'm 5'10 and a half and I weigh 185 pounds. My body fat is around 10 to 12%. This is the place where I like to stay. I like to keep my body weight between 175 and 185 and I like to keep my body fat between 9% and 12 to 13% at the highest. Doing this allows me to stay in that range really easy and really comfortably. Okay, the next key concept for the cyclical carb cycling is how to actually do it. When to go up and down with your carbs. And I kind of do this in two different ways, but there is a number of different ways that you can actually do cyclical carb cycling. I'm gonna to explain to you guys exactly how I do it. So generally what I do is I stay in that middle range most of the time, the 25 to 90 gram range. Once per twice every one to two weeks, I'll go up to the 90 to 150 gram range. Then every few weeks, I'll spend three to seven days in that super low fat, zero carb keto range. And that's basically how I do it on a regular basis. Option two that I've played with in the past, and this is when I'm actually trying to get super shredded or super lean, or I'm just trying to lose a little body fat. So option two for me is staying in that keto range for about seven to 14 days on average. Then I'll go to the mid range, the 25 to 90 gram range for about two to three days. Once I've done that, then I go to the high carb range, the 90 to 150 range, again for two to three days, and then I pull it back to the keto phase again for seven days, 14 days, something like that. So I keep it pretty simple and it doesn't have to be too specific. Here's the main thing to take home. When designing your own carb cycling phase, the one thing is, is if you're in a keto phase and you're trying to be in a keto phase, obviously the more you go to the mid and higher ranges of carbs, it's gonna pull you out of the ketogenic effect. For me personally, my goal isn't to be in keto all the time. If I am, that's great. If I'm not, I don't really care. So if you are someone who's trying to be in the keto range, then you just have to be a little bit more moderate with your windows going out of the keto range. One thing to note that's pretty important for me personally, and this is how I kind of keep my body weight and body fat exactly where I want it to be, I don't range my calories a whole lot, and my protein stays about the same all the time. So I'm not really trying to do this to manipulate my caloric intake, 
I'm just doing this to manipulate the way my body can be metabolically flexible and use different fuel sources. Also, if I'm trying to do something extremely explosive, if I'm playing a lot of sport, if I'm going out into the wilderness and I'm doing a ton of hiking, hiking, a ton of cycling, a ton of rowing, a ton of paddle boarding, a lot of physical activity, I do bump my carbohydrate range up slightly. Also, it's to be noted that I don't generally stay in the high carb range, the 90 to 150 gram range, very long or very often. Most of the year, I'm in that moderate mid range between 25 and 90, 99 at the most and I bump into that keto range here and there as I feel like it, as I need to. Now, I think the last important topic so that you have a well-rounded approach is what carbs are best to utilize during your cyclical carb cycling with an animal-based diet. For me personally, I keep it super simple. My favorite carbs are fruit, usually sweet fruit, real basic stuff like apples, mangoes, things like that. I also do really good with potatoes and sweet potatoes, different forms of squash, a little bit of raw local honey, and really that's my carb sources. I keep them pretty limited to the ones I know work best for me, and I really am not fond of junk carbs, and I don't do any processed foods, and that's just kind of what works best for me. For those of you who would like a little bit more information about my carb intake, I did put out a video called my animal-based grocery list where I go over basically all the carbohydrates that work best for me, and you can kind of get a more detailed look at everything in that video. As with everything, guys, I think the most important thing is to play with these concepts and make them your own. Experiment, try things out, and customize and personalize everything from your certain gram range and your certain macros to the foods that you're eating. I personally do well on an extremely high carnivore-ish, animal-based food diet. And I like to vary my carbs very limited because really there's only certain carbs that I really enjoy and that are clean enough to be in my diet to keep my digestion, my gut health, my skin health, my hormonal health where I like it to be, which is at a very balanced and high level. Have you guys tried any type of carb cycling with an animal-based diet or a keto diet or a carnivorous diet? I'd love to hear from you down in the comment section. If you guys are enjoying this content, remember to smash the like button turn your notifications on, subscribe, and share. It's actually a super basic concept. It actually works really well. It's actually really fun. And for me personally, it gives my diet a ton of flexibility, never allows it to get boring or stagnant, and keeps me on my skin health, gut health, muscle building, lean, athletic, body, lifestyle game with relative ease. I don't have any struggles staying with this diet in any way, shape, or form. It's delicious, it gives me variety, and it's pretty easy. For those of you who are trying to get a hold of me to become one of my skin health clients, there are links in the description box for all my offerings, a consultation, the three phases workbook, and Skinessa, which is by far the best probiotic for healing the skin and having healthy skin and a healthy gut biome. I'll be back with many more videos really soon, guys. Peace.